Welcome to Sean to Modern Endpoint Management, the modern talk with OCs. So, Dijon, let's have your name, age, personal status, and where do you live? Uh, let's see. Uh, my name, what? Dijon Walsham. Um, age, uh, no comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, oh, I'm 34, but on, only just. <laughs> Uh, personal status. Um, hmm. How would I describe my personal status? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'll Are you go... married? Oh, oh, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. No. no. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh. Well, dating at the moment, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. I mean, personal status, I would have just said um, alive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, <laughs> I mean, in these uh, COVID days, right? Alive, it's a good, uh, it's a good way to, to, to set your personal status. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. <laughs> and where do you live in the, uh, in this yeah. big world? So uh, I live in the UK, uh, specifically I live in Swindon, Wiltshire, which is kind of more the country side of the UK. Well, originally um, I was uh, mainly in London, so I moved up here about four years ago. Okay. So is it, uh, is it uh, nice to, to get away from the, from the city and the pulsing life and, and all that? Oh yeah, yeah, it, it absolutely, absolutely is. I mean, uh, I enjoy a lot more of the sort of the quietness um, as opposed to more of the the, the actual the city life, the busyness of everything, and actually being able to be somewhere where the car can actually drive. So <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. So, uh, I mean, in in Denmark, we we. We have a lot of uh, bicycles, and so so if you are in the city, you would you would you would go with the bicycle because it's much faster when you go. Uh, is it the same in in London? It's exactly how it is in London. Yeah, there's okay. probably more there's probably more cyclists than there is cars these days, and so they've hmm. got their own lanes now. So, oh, yeah, that's uh, maybe that's a great idea because uh, I mean the bicycles are insane in Copenhagen. Yeah. It's it's like they have nine lives. Uh hello, I'm a car. I can drive you down. Yep, the, the London is exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like they are invincible, right? Mm. They cannot Yeah. Really really crazy. So uh, okay, so you live uh, up north of uh, of London. Uh, I mean, UK is a is a very large country uh, compared to Denmark, at least, mm -hmm. and very long. And you have Scotland and Ireland and Wales yeah. also. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not too far from Wales, actually. <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah. So what do um, what do you like uh, to do in spare time? Um. It depends. Really. I'm, uh, I suppose at the moment um, I'm kind of uh, very into sort of things like the um, things like the crypto spaces. Um, so I mean, outside of work, I mean, I'll, I'll do a lot of stuff like that. Um, I, I tend to pick up a lot of general stuff as well. Um, I'm quite a sports enthusiast, so I, I watch a lot of sort of um, competitive sports like boxing and MMA and those kind of things as well. And then at the moment as well, oh. Or well, because it's blurry at the moment, you can't actually see the piano keyboard at the back. But there's there's a little element um, of, of that as well at the same time. But um, and then some form of collection, like collecting stuff as well. So I like to collect a lot of um, music based stuff as well. So, yeah, that's that's kind of a good mm. mixture outside. That's, of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So so do you actually play these instruments? Um. Yeah, yeah. Um. I do play the um, the piano quite a bit, so um, I was sort of going in and out of writing some sheet music as well. But sometimes, with so much things that I do in in, in IT, sometimes it goes in and out. But uh, but yeah, every, every now and then I, I I do pick it back up. Mm. I uh, that's nice to to do some totally different from from the yeah. IT daily job, right? 
Yeah, in music, it's just you can express yourself in 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 some other ways than just sitting and do a blog post, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, how how long have you been in in the business? I see business. <sighs> oh, oh, this is really showing my age now. Um, <laughs> oh, I think about fifteen years. About yeah, yeah. about fifteen years. Yeah. It's about uh, the same for me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but uh, fifteen years—that's that's a lot. And 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 then you've seen a lot of stuff, and 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 you've definitely been in the on-prem world, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so, but I mean, cloud is not that new, right? It's just um, outsourcing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely evolved. <laughs> we've we've done that for for many years. Mm. Just haven't had the so great uh, internet lines. Yeah. So uh, I mean, maybe it's because of of the better internet we have now. It's a success that uh, Azure and AVS and all these cloud services is actually yeah. a success. Yeah, yeah, they def definitely are. Hmm. Ah, uh, that's cool. So. Which company do you work at? Um, so well at the moment, so I, I actually operate um a couple of my own uh, businesses. So I've got the uh, Walsham Solution side because um, I'm primarily a uh, uh, a contractor on that side of things. And then recently, I've got the uh, founder and chief Microsoft Technologies of a new business called uh, Protect Org. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of sort of split between um, doing a lot of working on b b between those two at the moment, which is uh, it's, it's definitely interesting. There's a lot of variation of different um, elements of uh, work building up uh, two different areas. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Hmm. It sounds uh, like you're busy. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I see your your name there. You have the MVP as well. So. I guess you are juggling a lot, a lot uh, in the different. Uh, oh, yeah. Is is these jobs? Is that like freelance or is it your own company that you shown? Yeah. Um. Or, so, oh, it was Walsham. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So Walsham Solutions is kind of more, I guess, like the the freelance side, but then it's also an actual real business as well. Um, Protect Org is primarily way more of a business than the sort of Walsham Solutions side, but yeah. Hmm. Uh, nice. So, I guess you have been working home as as all others uh, during this pandemic, and and but 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 how has it been for you uh, during this pandemic? Um, I would say the only real major difference that I've seen is is the fact that. Um, a lot more organizations are, I guess, more encouraging of the sort of work from home culture these days. Um, I mean, before the actual uh, pandemic, um, it, it, it was sort of a luxury to sort of work from home every couple of days or so. But then I think the perception of it changed a lot more when you have to we'll work from home now. So and then everyone's closing down their offices as well. So there's a lot more um, sort of room to sort of get to know more of the work from home life, especially when it comes to meetings and everyone is virtually based now. So I, I think I think we've gotten used to it, but at the same time, there's a lot of people that's yearning more of uh, um, sort of getting out there and getting back into the office as well. But I'm, I'm actually quite happy working from home, to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I guess everybody um, needs to be social at some point and and but but having these um, uh, driving back and forth uh, the commuting i guess having not to do that anymore it's it's like okay i save a lot of, of time before work and after work and then if you are like mvp or oc or something like that uh, you can spend that time and and you can add it and then then actually you have all the time you need for blogging and all that stuff that yeah. really was 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 a big pressure before right yeah, 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 definitely was. I think when I was doing the blogging around then, I think I somehow found ways to sort of get around it. But yeah, definitely working from home does make it a, a lot easier to sort of uh, 
could have bring up content a lot quicker as well. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I guess if you're freelance and, and stuff, uh, consultants uh, at least, uh, if you're working from home, it, it can be quite uh, difficult to actually uh, read the customer as if you were there uh, on site. So how is how is your business uh, working from home on, on that uh, side of, of, of things? Um. I would say because of the lot of the uh, clients and some of the projects I work on now, um, I guess I'm lucky in a sense where most of it doesn't necessarily require me to um, sort of um, have to sort of perform tasks or project tasks which actually may need you to be on site. So you might have things where it might involve things like build rooms and building computers or there might be some things where even on on the, like a security perspective things might be very locked down and then you might have to go on site anyway but i think a lot of that is actually changing as well and i think a lot of them are also adapting to more of the work from home side of things as well um i, I definitely think um, teams has definitely uh, made that a lot easier as well especially with sharing the screen and then even getting more innovative and having uh, teams on your phone and then just putting the camera on and then switching it the other way around and just say hey this server is on fire <laughs> hmm. yeah teams it's it's really a good thing and and when it's not it when it's not working it's like Ah. Oh yeah, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster. Yeah, exactly. And during the pandemic, uh, it couldn't follow, right? All the cloud services, it, 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 it was just too much, too much yeah. load for Microsoft. Yeah. So the quality was like, okay, let's go on to low quality, and then we might get our call uh, through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So next question is, how many hours do you put into to this job or to the different jobs? Um, that's where work from home has its horrible, horrible downside, because um, I think when you work from home, I don't even think you even have an end time. I don't even think you have an end time. I, I think literally the moment you wake up is literally when you start. But um, I think it, I think when more discipline comes into play, I think you start to sort of understand how to sort of structure the day so that you don't just sort of wake up and then just go right into work. And then because you have a tendency to where you work from home, you can immediately work right through um, sort of like a one, a standard one hour break that you would have if you was to work in the office. So that is sort of the, the downside in that way. But it just takes a bit of structuring and understanding on how to sort of progress the day. But uh I try to keep the day within sort of the normal wish if you want to call it normal um sort of eight ish nine hours a day but but then you never know what kind of things can come up and and, and I'm just glad that I'm not part of a twenty four hour uh support or on call call out <laughs> yeah, I could imagine it's it's um hmm. Yeah, so so I guess this is uh, the answer I get from from the OCs and the MAPs, right? So yeah. so you have you have like seven and a half, eight, nine, ten hours a day, and then you also have the the blogging uh, on on the site, correct? Yes. Mm, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So so it easily gets to like forty five, fifty hours a week. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's not because it's 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 easy to to actually be a um, MVP. You need to somewhat give to the community, otherwise you're yeah. not entitled to continue that next year, right? Yeah, yeah. So so one of the things that MVP said is that okay, now you really have to push blocks out there, but but no, you don't. You just have to continue what ha you have been doing, right? Mm. So yeah, okay. That's great to hear, but but um, yeah, at least from my side, I, I mean, I I also put a lot of of evening hours in 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 blogging, yeah. But who knows? Maybe I could uh, settle with uh, with uh, less uh, material out there. But you know, when it becomes a hobby, yeah, I could say it's it it really doesn't matter, right? If you yeah. like it, why don't? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks uh, so much for that. Um, so, um, when when did you become a OC for for this group? Um, 
I think it was sort of near the end of um, last year. Some, yeah, I think it was something like near, yeah, about roughly near the end of last year um, that I became the uh, one of the official contributors. Yeah. Mm. Um, and and what what do you think of the group so far? Um, yeah, so yeah, the, the group is um, has definitely uh, evolved uh, very, very quickly from the time when I became um, an official contributor as well. And um, before I was actually um, a member of the group, let alone be an official contributor, I always used to um, frequent the forums around TechNet, um, um, especially around the, the spaces that I specialize in as well. But since when that migrated off and started to get closed down, uh, this particular group um, definitely now sort of um, owns that particular space, especially around the SDCM and enterprise mobility stuff. And um, and particularly LinkedIn wasn't necessarily um, a place that you would go to to sort of get involved with technical groups. Like that. There are a lot of groups, but um, this particular one, um, I think definitely is adding so much um, to the community um, and especially to the, to the actual technical culture and, and the amount of um, contributions and knowledge and articles and tips that you get from there is just it's, it's just phenomenal at, at the moment I've, I've not I've not I've not seen any group like this so it's 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 definitely brilliant to see its growth over time mm. yeah I agree on that so you you mentioned that technet and 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 other forums so if if this group was not uh, did not exist and 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 you would like to seek information so what was that like before this linkedin group where where would you do that um well, i would say um i would say probably technet would have been uh, probably my uh, my very heaviest uh, source of information uh, there are some parts of um forums like reddit as well um that's got some parts there but then there's a lot of people that actually had their own websites and they was doing their own content anyway so i think naturally when you search for certain things um a lot of their websites would come up as well and i think that's probably um one of the motivations there for me when it comes to the blogging space on my side as well was that i wanted to sort of be the uh one of the others that was sort of the go-to um for um information on how to resolve something or a guide to something or sort of um exploring or exposing sort of new stuff that was out there as well so mm. Yeah, I, I guess uh, Google will also help you on on topics that if you have some weird error, something zero X and then eight uh, uh, ciphers, it's like, oh, what yeah. is this? And <laughs> go and Google it and you get like a million hits on that. And uh, yeah. I guess Google is, is a big source of, uh, yeah, helping us out here as IT pros, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, great to hear. Um, uh, what what tech areas do you like to to cover if if you really want to go in 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 the mode of blogging something cool? Um, in terms of the tech areas, uh, I mean, besides the uh, well, besides like the enterprise mobility and the system center side, um, my tech areas are quite varied. Because um I, I do a lot of things around things like the um sort of the uh the BI side like Power BI and I, I do a lot of stuff on sort of custom reports and um, dashboards and those kind of things as well. Um, I may cover things around scripting, um, and then even in some cases now even even some developing um, as well. Um, I, I I definitely try it and sort of pick up every kind of. Um, new skill possible because um, there's just so much uh, collaboration and integration with other technologies. Now, I think it gets to the point where you might actually specialize in one technology, but then you find that they start integrating with others and then you end up working pretty much on on everything, really. <laughs> so you end up becoming quite generalistic, even though you might actually have um, a specialization in one specific area. So it, mm. it, it's gotten a lot more interesting especially on the on the uh, on the tech areas that I cover as well. 
Yeah, got you there, got you there. So uh, just let's let's take an example for, for example, the system center suite, right? Uh, um, I was I was very specialized in the config manager part, but but not the service manager or, or, or the the other uh, parts of, of, of that um, uh, suite. But but I saw some time ago that you actually do one of the the other system centers uh, is that the what 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 areas do you cover in in that? Um, so I would say, I well, with, with section, the exception of um, SCCM, um, SCOM is um, another one that I do a lot of of work on, and even de um, developed um, an, an application um, in sort of support of SCOM. Funny enough, SCOM was actually the first system center product I ever worked on before I even worked on SCCM. It was actually SCOM, then Virtual Machine Manager. Then it got to SCCM. So yes, yeah, SCCM was actually was actually the third one that I actually worked on. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but yes, I think SCOM, uh, SCCM, uh, Service Manager, and Orchestrator. I think those are the the primary primary ones that I I work on. There hasn't been too much demand for things like DPM and even Virtual Machine Manager is is there, and sometimes it's not, but yeah, mm. otherwise, yeah, those are the those are the four the main ones that I, I tend to work on. Yeah, so operations manager manager, right? Uh, SCOM. Uh, is is that very much alive still, or is uh, or every loads were uh, going towards uh, Azure? Um, I think SCOM is very very much alive, and and, and I think even with um, even with it just being primarily on premise. I think it's still quite um it, it's still got a, a very very big place in 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 the in, in the monitoring side of things. Um there are some early adopters going more into the sort of um the um Azure side and integrating it with SCOM and uh, log analytics and uh, those kind of things but it's not I I think it's starting to grow a little bit more but I think um, a lot of people are tending to use SCOM kind of more on premise until they sort of see something that really sticks out and stands out and actually answers their needs to when it gets to sort of more of this um Azure cloud space um kind of things I mean a lot of I see a lot of uh, places try to replace SCOM with other third party tools and they still can't really match up to how powerful SCOM is. I, I mean, I think the uh, the essence of systems and of the system center products is that the products can do pretty much anything and everything. It's just that it just takes someone it just takes someone to sort of know how to unlock them. And I think with the with the right type of tools and thought processes, you can really unlock all of the products to do pretty much anything and everything. It's just they're just sort of very, very, very big uh, molds of clay to sort of work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, my experience as well. So, so in the Azure space, we have uh, we have Sentinel and then then Log Analytics, and yeah. is 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 they are they the equivalent to Scum on prem? Um, I think they've got a little while before they can actually sort of satisfy every single thing that an, an on-prem SCOM can actually do. Um, I think log analytics um, works quite well, but then because I see a lot of organizations getting to that point where they might not want to go fully over there, so they sort of stick with an integration between SCOM and log analytics as well. I've I have seen a few places um, suffer in terms of uh, trying to put their monitoring in log analytics, but then they end up getting very huge bills at the same time, trying to replicate yeah. the exact same kind of monitoring for for log analytics. So I think there's a bit of a tug of war going on there in 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 terms of which area to sort of go to. But I think a lot are trying to stick with sort of being in the middle before they can work out exactly where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I was just to, about to say that exactly the bill on, on the log analytics workspace. Mm. So 
it's um, if you if you get a lot of data up there, it's it's quite expensive to yeah. to run uh, uh, run that. So, I guess if you have uh, uh, servers on prem and and you are able to host a SCOM, maybe that's uh, still the solution, and maybe it's still the most cheapest model, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's cool. So so you mostly cover the enterprise mobility space, which you are MVP uh, at, right? Yeah. And and then the the system center suite universe on prem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a huge area, uh, yeah. Jujong. So uh, I guess uh, you're quite busy uh, at 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 doing that. So. Um, and that was exactly what I was uh, referring to when I saw uh, or talking about the the blog post. I saw that okay, scum is uh, something that you really uh, really do a lot. Yeah. So if if you should name some of your publications uh, that makes you proud or something you could show to to the viewers, do you, do you have any good uh, post or any good solution that that you could maybe demo for us? Um, yeah, yeah, I've actually got three. Um, it, it took a while, but yeah, I've, I've actually got three that I could actually, uh, that I could actually show. Uh, cool. Um, right, let's see. Um, I'll just try and share some of my screen. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, yeah. right. So, right. Can you see that? I can see that. Right, okay. So yeah, so one of the three um, is this um, article here. So this is the um, let's see the migration from on premise to Intune, and um, I was quite proud of this one because one I think this might have been um, well, it was one of the first blog series that I've done on uh, the enterprise mobility side as well, and I think. This um, the motivation for this come from working on a lot of projects where um, there's a lot of organizations that are very um, indecisive on sort of where they want to go, especially when it comes to more of managing everything from uh, from Intune and having sort of a modern workplace management. And I know that a lot of organizations tend to sort of stay stuck in between where they might have sort of a a co-managed type of setup um, ranging from various reasons why they can't actually migrate completely from one side to another. So what this series did was um, not just talk about how to just get from on-premise to Intune step by step on, like, on a sort of a, a technical basis, but it was a, a series based on sort of looking at it on a design approach to seeing what you actually have, the benefits that you would get from moving, how you are as you are at the moment and sort of the restrictions that you might have going forward. So it gives gives the um, the the reader um, a more unbiased and, and clearer look on sort of everything that can happen and what, what's happening now and what can actually happen. So yeah, it, it's, it's definitely um, a good way of sort of understanding where your next steps would actually be. So it doesn't actually say that you should necessarily migrate from migrate your stuff from on premise to Intune, but I think it just gives you more of a fuller insight um, of the actual overall benefits. So you know exactly which way to go. Mm, so yeah. So so it's 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 helping you on the strategy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, exactly. a really good post. I believe yeah. I I've uh, I've read the most of them. I I, I remember. Yeah, I think, I think this was, I can't remember, I think this might have been five, five or six parts or something like that. So I, I always tend to start the first one with sort of being an introduction, sort of mm. what the series is about. And then then it sort of builds up from there, really. But yeah, I, I, I was actually quite proud of this series because I worked on so many projects. So I had so much knowledge and ideas to sort of get off of it. And yeah, so that was how this series uh, pretty much developed from here. Mm. That's one of them. So, so, and and what is in this series is also you are mapping the 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 wordings from what do you have in Config Manager and what is the equivalent on Intune, right? If I don't uh, yeah, remember yeah. wrong, yeah, yeah, that yeah, that was exactly that was exactly it. And then sort of breaking um, breaking up the article into certain sections, and then those sections would then end up becoming the next part of the series as well. So it sort of dives in. 
a lot more to, to sort of examine all of the options and all of the areas um, that you've got so that anyone yeah. wanting to sort of go a certain area could know exactly what they should do. So that's uh, actually a, a huge work from your side and uh, really valuable for, for the viewers here. So thank you for that, uh, Dijon. Yeah. So the next you have is that uh, in, in the list here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the second one, um, so this one um, is an article um, I did, and this is kind of more primarily um, with the uh, with more of the SCOM side of things. And the reason why um, this was uh, one that I was actually very proud of, well, one is because of the actual journey of this actual article, because um, if we actually um, look um this article is sort of based around um, um an application um which um i developed um alongside the um other company which i um founded being uh, protect org and this was basically about a solution that can actually create um management packs from scratch and this article basically just compares um different um technologies that can create management packs and what um what's and how the actual um, process and structure is because the creating a management pack is actually an extremely complicated process whether you know actually know what you're doing or not it can still be quite a complicated process so i basically came up with um a solution which could enable you to create a management pack not only extremely quickly, but also at the same quality and level without actually having to sort of be a, um, a sort of like a developer type level to understand sort of how to write code like XML and um, other areas like that. So it actually started off um, being a PowerShell script maybe six years ago, and then it went from a PowerShell script all the way to um an application written in c sharp so mm. yeah so it, it, it's it's definitely something that i i was uh, very proud of in terms of um this article to sort of see the sort of uh the journey it went through uh over a, a matter of years mm. yeah i can certainly see the the use case here so just to understand the management pack is uh it's 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 like a box of a lot of uh uh, pinpointers that you go f and have the SCOM to check for, right? And have alerts on on different things, right? So you yeah. input that into SCOM, and then you have this alert alert package, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that that that's pretty much yeah, that's pretty much um, how they work, yeah. And mm. and developing management packs, um, it's a very very tricky process because um there's a lot of guides there's a lot of um blogs and there's a lot of um and there's a few applications that are out there that do actually make the process easier but i've just felt like there's a lot of them that are whilst, whilst they're out there unless you have some kind of developer knowledge uh, sort of maybe beyond the scope of um what you might know um, as like a, a SCOM as a SCOM administrator, it might be very tricky to sort of understand uh, exactly how to write one. So what I wanted to do was bridge the gap between people who sort of knew how to sort of write something like that with maybe more of a developer state of mind, as opposed to someone who has no knowledge on how to create something like that at all, but then also can learn exactly how management pack works and how the structure is built from the ground up. So sort of eradicate having two groups um, of, of of sort of um, not knowing and then one completely knowing and then therefore you just have a group of people that just create can create a management pack and that's it. Mm. Yeah, so this is uh, this is true OC and MVP style making <laughs> an app to make the management packs of SCOM really easy. That's yeah. a great job. Yeah. yeah. It's look fairly easy. Uh, I mean, I'm yeah. not a Visual Studio uh, shark myself, but uh, I, I, I do follow the steps you have in here. And yeah, I think it it, it, it looks manageable for, for someone like me as well. So <laughs> good job. Yeah. 
And the third block you have there. Uh, look, it looks like AVS to me. Funny enough, this is an interesting one. So this one actually isn't a block. This is actually a book that I actually wrote. Oh, yeah. You're um, a book writer. Yeah. yeah. So um, this book was written about actually um, almost two years ago. Almost two years. Well, yeah. Well, actually over two years ago now, actually. So this book, um, this was written because um, I was actually doing another blog series um, a couple of years back. And it was more of a personal one. And this was more about the journey of actually getting into the IT industry. Because um, my background is I actually started off in IT when I just about turned 18. And I took um, a, a private course um, at the time. A place called um, Just IT, and at that time, I was the first eighteen-year-old to do an adult course at that place. So, mm. so the, the sort of journey to sort of go into the IT industry from eighteen, and it it, it it meant a lot to me because there was so much, there's so much um, experiences to sort of go through, especially when you first want to get into IT, the first IT job, everything, the amount of interviews that I had to go through and exams and all kind of stuff. So what I wanted, what I basically did was document that whole journey and turned it into a book. So it covered from when I first started and maybe uh, maybe about five, six years in, because um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people that want to get in, wanted to get into the IT industry at the moment. So I wanted to sort of create a book that sort of made people aware of sort of what to expect when they go through the same journey as well. So yeah, that that that, that was pretty much my motivation for for, for writing the book. Mm. That's uh, that's pretty cool to to actually write a book. I mean, that takes that takes a lot of effort to 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 actually do that and have reviewers and and yeah. Mm. How long is it? Um, it's about yeah, about hundred and fifty. Oh, it says eight already. Pages, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, sh um, I should I should learn to read. No, I'm I'm yeah. glad it said it because I I would have had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so how how long did it uh, take you to to write such a book? Um, I think maybe about space over um about. A couple of months, a few months. Um, it actually started off with me actually just typing little bits of memories that I had about certain parts of the journey that I went through at that time, and I was doing it on my phone. But then I think more, but then more and more material started to actually build up from it, and then so I was able to sort of structure it together, and then it ended up turning turning into a book because um I was actually doing a couple of um blog posts um sort of about some of the experiences that I went through when I first started and then because of the reception that it got it ended up turning into a book really yeah so hmm. wow so uh yeah you can get a book here and uh, then you can buy yourself a Christmas sweater as well so uh, yeah. yeah yes uh, yeah. <laughs> then you have two stuff for 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 the tree right the Christmas tree so yeah. uh, definitely. So is this is a big seller? Or how, uh, how do you have some some numbers on on, on the book, or is that uh, secret? Um, I think the stats on the sales are probably even secret to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the, only, the only thing I remember was when it actually came out. I think it I think it was in the top fifteen or top ten seller for a little while, but then. Amazon might, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure what sort of the book sales are like um, when things first come out, but I'll take mm. being top 10 for a little while. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely cool. Wow. Congratulations on that. <laughs> really, Thank really you. cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like rock stars creating books. I mean, wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, because I mean, I've seen there's a lot of people that actually created um, a lot of technical based books, and I actually did want to go down that route at first because that, that was one of the first things I did want to do. But then because I've actually sort of done a lot of um, sort of webinars and sort of speeches um, to sort of um, 
the younger guys um, about sort of advice about getting into the IT industry, I thought maybe I'll just take a different approach and maybe write a book, maybe more something geared towards that. Um, yeah. So, so you're like an entrepreneur and a a coach at 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 the same level. Uh, possibly, possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, MVP, and you are uh, uh, official contributor, and I mean, that is crazy. That is really crazy. So, good job, good Thank job. You. So, Dijon, if if you were to to give any tips or tricks that you want to pass on to the to the viewers here, now that you've you've done a lot of blog posts, you you are you are very good at at writing. You have this book and and etc. So so if 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 it should go um, and not do the same as the other OCs, and and then you should pass on a trick, maybe from from this motivation book. What would that be? <sighs> Tips and tricks. Um, I would say, I think the best tip or the trick I could give is, is probably this. So I guess maybe kind of relating to the book and I guess in general now is when I first started in IT, I basically wanted to work on anything and everything. That was That was it. I had no specialization. I didn't want to say, yeah, I wanted to focus on this. I just wanted to see everything. I just wanted to do everything. That was that was me. That was me. Mm. I, I literally wanted to work on everything. And, and I think the best thing about that way of thinking is that when you sort of have a more generalistic approach, I think you get to more find yourself technically on what you want to do. But I think you develop a foundational understanding on everything. And I think that's probably the most important thing before you can actually decide to say, OK, this is the area that I actually want to actually uh, sort of specialize in or this is the actual area that I wanted to go in. Because it, it took it took a few years for me to actually understand where exactly I wanted to be, because when I was sort of fortunate enough to sort of progress through um, different positions quite quickly, from sort of going first line, second line, third line. I, I pretty much went there very quickly because of that way of thinking. Um, I mean, at, at that those particular times, I was doing about three or four Microsoft exams a year at that point at that point. So mm -hmm. I was very I was very driven to sort of to wanting to know and understand everything. And I think once you sort of build that um foundation, um an understanding of everything, then I think you are sort of in the best position to say, okay, this is sort of the area that you really want to go for. And yeah, that that's that that's pretty much the uh, probably the best tip or trick I I can give. Once 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 you know in, in anything and everything, then yeah, you've definitely got a good understanding of where they want to go. Mm. Yeah. So a a a good interest in IT and and be hungry. Is that yeah. the is that the tip? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great much. tip. It's a really great tip. So with that, I just want to say thank you, Jushon, for being here in the interview, and for all the viewers, thank you very much for today. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.